cause for alarm. Us! Ah! King of the Impossible! I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm here, I survived week two as a software developer. Now I thought I would mix it up this week and actually provide a keyword for kind of each week so you can tell the general mood and trend as to what happened over the next three months. And the keyword for this week is... Oh, this is so bad. I apologize for this. This week, I've been feeling really overwhelmed. I will admit it, when it comes to going from uni, which is a very structured, very, you're gonna do assignment X, you're gonna use technologies Y, Z, and A, it's, it's quite easy, it's quite simple because you only have to learn those, those things and you only have to learn a little bit of each thing to kind of get the assignment done. So if you're learning Python, you learn a little bit of Python or C Sharp or Java or anything like that. When it comes to working in the real world, there are so many different frameworks and tools which are available to you. It makes it very difficult to find out what you need to learn, why you need to learn it and how it all fits together. I know that some of my other team members as well are experiencing the same thing and it's something that we were told to expect. There's just a lot of technologies out there and it's a lot to take in. So onto the meat and potatoes of the video and that is what I did this week. We actually got stuck into coding this week which was so, so nice to do. This is part of the project called the Morale app which is the web-based application which we're gonna be working on for hopefully the next three months. The Morale app is essentially a way in which you can track teams' moods and analytics and trends and that sort of thing. Now the way in which we worked is part of the Agile process where we had a meeting which determined all of the tasks which were given to us by a product owner and then we have two weeks to do those tasks. So sprints are typically two weeks long. We had to create a base implementation of what the app was gonna look like. We also had to do some prototyping, some user testing, some UX kind of stuff, and that was really fun. In terms of what I actually did this week, it was built down to doing some HTML, doing some JavaScript, and doing some prototyping for the final design. I'm actually not sure if that's learnt or learned. This week I learned a couple of things and this is going back to the overwhelmed kind of keyword of this week. I learned that there's still a ton of stuff that I need to learn and ignorance when it comes to software is bliss. There are so many tools out there, there's so much to learn that when you're actually exposed to what you do need to learn, it, it's just terrifying, a little bit terrifying. I also spent a lot of this week learning JavaScript, so going through tutorials, Point and Code Academy and all that kind of stuff, learning JavaScript as I went. And fortunately, HealthLink are really accommodating of personal development and self-learning, so I actually did get quite a bit of time to do that. We also learned about continuous integration and continuous delivery, which acronymizes down to CICD. CICD is essentially a way in which you can automate the software delivery process. So by developing your code, testing it and deploying it, making that whole thing really, really streamlined and getting the pipeline nailed down. In order to do CICD, you have to use a tool called Docker, at least in the implementation that HealthLink is using. Docker is a really, really awesome technology and it's something that I'm really keen to learn. To give you the cliff notes of Docker, Docker is essentially, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. Say for example, you're a developer and you want to test your software on a Linux environment, but you're operating in Windows. What you need to do then is spin up a virtual machine. You need to boot into Linux. You need to install any dependencies. So for example, your Java JDK, the JRE, and then you need to build your application on top of that, run it, do all the testing, all that kind of stuff. That takes time. This is on a Windows environment, mind you. With normal development, you're getting that Windows machine, you're putting the virtual machine on top of that, you're installing Linux, then you're installing your dependencies then you're running your application and doing all the testing on top of that. With Docker, you've got your Windows host OS, you've got your virtual machine, and then it essentially splits all of these virtual machines into containers. And it treats each of these containers, within the containers are essentially system images. So within a single container, you could be running an Alpine Linux OS, you could be running a Java JDK, a Java JRE and your application on top of that. And you can have that spread across multiple containers which are all kind of accessing the same kernel. And the cool thing is, is that you can spin up these containers really quickly because they're based off system images and not basically a full OS. It's a really quick and easy way in which to get up a specific development environment. And it's versatile. You can send it across to Buddy Mark who 
you know, is on the other side of the room. He can spin up exactly the same system image in the same Docker container and he can run his stuff in the same kind of environment that you are without having to spin up a virtual machine, getting all the dependencies and stuff. It's a really streamlined process. Docker is something that I'm learning to be passionate about, so I'll be talking about this in a separate video. So this week, feeling overwhelmed. There are a number of reasons why I'm feeling overwhelmed, and it's primarily due to the technology stack that I'm going to have to learn to become competent. And part of that is the fact that I want to be competent now, and, and I'm not, it's gonna take time. I've spoken to a couple of guys at work about this, and they basically said, it's going to be a matter of exposure. So over the next three months, it's gonna be me getting used to these tools, developing in them, learning the pros and cons of each and how they all contextually fit together and building my own mind map about all these technologies. And that's not something that comes in a week or a couple of weeks. It's gonna be a matter of time and dealing with the fact that I'm going to be reasonably incompetent for that amount of time really does suck. I know that I'm still gonna be able to be a functional developer but in terms of getting an understanding of all of these technologies and how they work, I think that it's just gonna take time. It's something that I'm going to have to learn to accept that I'm not gonna be this technical mastermind in the next month or so. Not even the next three months, probably not even the next year. It's gonna take a wee while to get to that level of expertise. As well as that is dealing with the fact that I don't really know where to start. For one problem, there could be 50 different solutions with 50 different technologies in which you can solve that problem. So trying to figure out where to start learning all these resources is really quite stressful and challenging as well. It's stressful because you don't know whether or not a technology is worth your time, whether or not the opportunity cost of going with this technology and learning that now is actually greater than going with technology Y and learning about that. So I'll give you a quick rundown of the technologies that we actually learned about this week at HealthLink. And I'm gonna have to read off my phone here. There is no way I can remember all of these at once. So to start off the list, we have Bamboo, Docker, Puppet, Rancher, Source Tree, Angular, Angular 2, Svelte, Inferno, SVN, Bootstrap, Foundation, Mongo, MySQL, NoSQL, Plumber, Atom, Atomic, IntelliJ, WebStorm, Git, React, Node.js, Express, and Java. Now, those are all things that were mentioned in the last week and things that we kind of need to learn, not, not necessarily how to use, but their function and purpose. And that's what I mean by, it's intimidating because there are so many technologies and they all seem to be so important and you don't know where to start. The problem with that is, is that if you learn a little bit of X, a little bit of Y, a little bit of this, then your knowledge is gonna be three miles wide, but it's only gonna be one foot deep. And that's something that I really want to avoid. I want to be competent in as many things as possible. And if I have to learn 50 things and only learn a little bit about those 50 things, that's, that's not good for me. My solution to all this is to find someone that will take you under their wing. Find someone who's a technical lead, someone that's technically competent, someone that you respect, and, and find out information from them. Where did they learn from? Why did they learn X over Y? What would they recommend that you learn now? It's all really key info that you can get for free at your workplace. So in my case, I talked to my buddy, so I've been allocated a buddy at HealthLink, and he was really, really, really helpful. He basically said, look, what are the skills that you wanted to learn? I said, I kind of want to learn full stack. I want to do UI development. I want to do front end. I want to do a bit of back end. I want to spread out my knowledge so I actually understand what's going on. And he said, cool, you should build a website and then transfer that across to a mobile app. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. By talking to someone who's been doing this for a number of years, it really helped eliminate all the stuff that I didn't need to know and helped me focus down on the technologies that I should be learning. So that's it for me for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it a little bit useful. I don't mean to scare anyone, but that's really just how I'm feeling this week. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed, feeling a little bit stressed, but it will get better as I learn more about these technologies and how that all kind of fits together. So hope you guys all had a good week. I will see you in the next one.